guys welcome back to the YouTube channel today's video uh, we got in a 2002 Dodge Grand Caravan it's got the old 3.3 .3 in it uh, problem is fuel injector is leaking and it happens to be the one right here in the front uh, the very front far right uh, that actually is peeing out fuel pretty bad the o-rings are shot um, this thing's got 304,000 miles on it uh, I've been told that it's that's not the original engine but you never know uh, if you remove the two bolts one here and one here one's a 8 mil one's a 10 mil if you remove those two bolts slide it out of the way you'll be able to actually see and access I unplugged the injector already but uh, you can see how clean it is from the fuel leaking down it <clears throat> it's, I've let it cool off for a few hours now right at the very top uh, where it pops into the uh, fuel rail is where the o-ring is leaking inside of there and it's leaking all the way down uh, not a good thing because you know the ignition coal pack is sitting directly right beside of it so uh, if that were to spray out that would be a no bueno so anyway uh, to get to the injector and to the uh, the rest of them the whole intake's got to come off so we're going to start with the whole cow the whole cow is going to have to come off and then um, start with the wipers I believe the wipers actually have a clip on these or maybe it's bolt on it's been a while since I've done one of these yeah so that's a 13 or a 15 same thing with the other side and once we get the wiper arms off then you've got a Torx bit screw there there's some in between one there, one there, and one there. And I think there's a couple underneath the blades too. Yeah, right in there, some clips. So I'll go ahead and get that removed and uh, get more access to it all. All right, got the cow off. It's time to take the uh, air box out and get that out of the way. There's a clip here. There's a clip here. You pop those off. Fill up a uh, flathead. Then you got a sensor here with a plug. Unplug that guy. And then it's got three locks. Once you undo it, you pull it out and go up just like I did. Got a bunch of other sensors to undo here. Out of control valve, drop position sensor. Get it to unplug anyway. There we go. They're missing their clips in that hold them in, lock them in, the lock in clips. Uh, I'm probably going to take this bracket off, so might as well just do these now. can't do it with one hand but undo these two bolts they're eight millimeter and then uh, undo the cables from the throttle body well they're supposed to come out anyway okay now this is off now you do have these little push in you push them in on both sides but I can't even push these in they're hard as a brick so I chose to take the two bolts out and just leave them like they were there is um, eight 10 millimeter bolts to take the upper intake plenum off. Yes, eight. One, two, three, four. And then there's same four in the back. You gotta unplug this connector. A couple vacuum hoses. And the rear uh, PCB vent part. All right, now the intake should just come right off. There's your 
There's the gaskets that got to replace. The orange. It's probably factory, more than likely. It's probably never been taken off. A little bit oily, but you know, it is what it is with the mileage. We just need to get to the fuel rail. Alright, so you push in the clips. If you got them, some of these are broke. Push them in and pull out, and uh, it comes off. Next thing is, is moving the whole harness out of the way. Looks like somebody's been in here before because this stuff just is everywhere and it's a mess. Lay that to the side. Now we have uh, four 10 millimeter bolts to get it off. One, two, three, and four. And then uh, the whole fuel rail should come right up. Now that all the bolts are out, I just take something and uh, pry it up. This one's still wet. You can see that one right there, it's still wet. At least a little bit. So these are these clips. You pop these clips out and then an ejector pops out. You see the little o-ring right there. I bought a whole kit, so we're just gonna replace them all. And be done with it. Alright, I'm going to show you how to do this on one injector and then I'm going to go ahead and do all six off camera so I don't have to take so long at getting this job done. Take a flathead in between the clip, put the clip out. Just like so. Now, the, the injector, wiggle it, twist it, and pull upward, just like so. And there's the bad o-ring. It's actually pinched. Some of it's coming off in my hand. So, definitely is just an o-ring that's shot. Pull it off with your hand, just like so. I'm changing both of them. There is six O greens in here in the kit. Two for each injector. Sometimes you have to take a flathead, pry it underneath the O ring. Just like that. It's easy. It's not hard at all. Now I get our new injector O-rings. AutoZone brand, not a sponsor. There's the part number, 
believe it was like 10 bucks for the whole set, which is not bad. Don't know why exactly it came with this. I believe it's supposed to help you put the O-ring on, but anyway, tear this open and oil these up with some oil uh, when you put them on, so it helps pop it back into the intake without ripping them and causing the leak again. Take the new O-ring, a lot more springy, you know, tension to it, tighter than the older ones. Just like so, pops right on. We're gonna lubricate this, like I said, with oil before they go back into the intake. This bottom one's gonna be a little bit more tricky, but it'll go on. Got an old bottle of Havoline 10W30, it don't matter what oil you use. Just lubricate. The whole thing all the way around. If you get some inside the injector, it's not going to hurt it. I've actually ran a vehicle, um, half a jug of, half a quart of oil in the gas tank with five gallons, and it ran just fine. So it's not going to hurt the injector if you get oil down in there. Now you're going to take it and pop it back into the fuel rail. Exactly how you take it out. Done. Now I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, pop the clip back on. It's locked in now. It ain't going to go nowhere. And it's done. Now i got to do the other five and then it'll go back in the intake. Alright, so it's the next day. It's been pouring down rain, so I'm finally able to get to this thing. There is these little end caps is what the website calls them online for the injector they're plastic they broke this is the only good one left and it's even cracked I'm worried that if it doesn't have these on the ends that it's going to go in too far cause a leak something like that I don't know because these have like this little ridge where I guess it stops the injector from going so far in I don't know I am gonna put this one back on it pops on this one's missing it broke literally broke right in my hand uh, when I was trying to put the uh, o-rings on so uh, I'm gonna lubricate these injectors with some oil and we're gonna throw them back in and get this thing done uh, I left this one like I said because it doesn't uh, it's missing so anyway <clears throat> so if it does leak, I'll be able to see it because you can actually see this injector on this end and you can see this injector um, But you can't see the rest so at least it'll be on this side so I can be able to detect it if it starts to leak I'm hoping and praying that it don't so lubricate it with some oil And we're gonna pop them right back in its spot Okay, so the injectors are back in they're plugged up They're bolted in I just primed the system a few times. There is no fuel. I don't smell anything either leaking so, um, <clears throat> I'm going to put the top, upper top intake plenum back on, which is over here in the back of the truck. I need to go get an air filter because that's not, that's just nasty. So, to get these little gaskets out, here's a gasket kit for that. There's the part number, MS96176. They're like little seals, they pop in, pop out. It's really, really simple. It's not hard at all. You pretty much grab the end of the, the little gasket, pull it right out. You're done. Do that for all of them. Clean the oil off of the surface. 
put the new seals in without oil. You don't need to oil them up. <clears throat> Clean this surface really good like I did with brake cleaner so the gasket can seal and not have an intake leak and cause misfires and other issues. Look at us just pop it in, <clears throat> mash it around all the way around. It's really not hard at all. You can't mix them up. They go in either way. As long as it's the same shape, form, as the gasket's made. It's like an oval, like a racetrack. Do that for all six parts. Put it back on. Alright, everything's back together besides the air box, air filter, and uh, there's one sensor unplugged, but it should run without it. Probably not happy about it, but we'll see. It's running again. I don't smell any fuel. I don't see any fuel. So, uh, run to the parts store real quick, get an air filter, put it back together, and uh, take it down the road and see what happens. Still gotta put the cow and all that stuff back on, but other than that, Okay, so here we are a few hours later, and it's still not fixed. As you can tell, it's still apart. I had to take everything back apart because after a test drive, well, I started smelling the fuel smell again. Guess what it was? This little guy right here is leaking fuel, and I want to say it's called the fuel pressure regulator, but it's something else. Uh, anyway, there's an O-ring under here that is bad. It's common, common failure on the 3.3s, uh, 2001 to 2007. Uh, basically, there's just an O-ring underneath there that fails. Now, you can replace the whole thing, or you can just pop this guy off, and you see it moves. Pop it off. There's tangs on the bottom. They actually hold it and grab it to it. You want to make sure that you don't damage these when you pop these off. So um, this is just a little extra footage um, because I was trying to make this as just a bad fuel injector O-ring, but come to find out, the O-ring in here is shot, um, <clears throat> and it was actually causing the leak and not the injector O-ring. But the injector O-ring, the clip for this one was loose, so. We did fix one issue, and some of the other rings were already deteriorated, so. Um, they say online that this is the same size as the injector O-ring, so I bought another kit that comes just for this. Uh, I've already taken the fuel pressure out of the system as far as I can by the Schrader valve. Over here, take the cap off. There's a little Schrader valve like you put tire air in your tire. Take a flathead, push it in, fuel will shoot out, and that's what I've done. But I am going to lay a rag. Uh, while I try to pry this off with a flathead screwdriver and try to catch as much fuel as I can that comes out of this because I'm pretty sure it's probably full. So, uh, fill this up around it and then we'll try to get it off. Alright, got it halfway out. As you can tell, there was some, a lot of fuel in there still left. You can see it's still a lot, um, but that seems to be the only thing wrong. So, pop this out, get the new O ring put on it. I gotta get that fuel out though. Alright, so here is the part. Of course the camera's not going to focus. As you can see it's got little tangs on. You got to make sure that the, you don't mess these up when you're doing it. To uh, make sure that they are sticking as close as they are to the middle. 
and that way so when it pops back on it clicks in and locks in because it locks in to the lip it's on this right here so it doesn't pop back off there's a lot of fuel pressure if this pops off and fuel squirts out and hits this guy here you're game over it's automatically engine bay completely on fire uh, it says on here by Mopar do not remove um, I don't know what you're supposed to do if you can't remove it. Um, I looked online because I thought it was a fuel pressure regulator. It turns out it's not. It's something like a pulsating thing for the injectors. Um, <laughs> never seen one of these before. Um, but anyway, I put another O-ring on it that I had laying around that went for an injector that was still good. I'm going to slap that back on. The o-ring that came off didn't look to be torn until I finally squeezed it and kept looking at it and found the spot that was actually bad There it is on the inside. It's ripped. So, we're going to throw this back on. You see how it kind of pops back into its socket. But before I do that, I need to lubricate with oil so we don't pinch this one and rip this one and then it leaks again. My fear is that it's leaking in this area around the whole thing itself the whole assembly and if that's the case then it'll have to be a junkyard route and uh, getting a whole fuel rail off of another junkyard van and putting it on this one because I don't know what else to do you can't find the parts anymore it's too old key is is popping it back on it's not so easy <laughs> all right sure enough this is what I was afraid of finally got it on which was kind of difficult but it's on there um, it, loo it moves way too much. You can twist and turn it now. I don't like that. That's going to pop off when pressure builds. I'm going to fire it up, but I just got a feeling that, that ain't going to work. I'm going to prime the system first and uh, see what happens. But that's just not suitable for what I'm going to feel comfortable with. So it looks like a uh, junkyard route it is. I'm pulling another one off. Yay! Awesome. No leaks. Mine dry. No leaks under there either. I will say it's tight. kind of feel it pulsating and I will say it is tight now with it running you can't really spin it as uh, easy but I don't see any leaks I guess we'll give it a test drive or let it sit here and run and see what it does but I don't know if I'm happy with that or not so I guess what I'm going to do is go to the junkyard like I said get just the fuel rail and swap out the fuel rail and hope to goodness that it don't leak like this one did it's a very common issue on these vans so uh, I guess next thing we're going to do is head to the junkyard so we'll see you when it's daylight 24 hours 
because I don't feel too comfortable with this. That's a lot of pressure pushing this guy up. I can push it down, but I can feel the fuel pressure. If that builds too much, if you're going down the road and you give it balls to the wall, just for instance, um, and it builds a lot of pressure, it could pop that guy off, and I really just don't want to take the chance of something like that happening. So, anyway, here's the junkyard. Find another one. There's plenty of them down there. It's like the graveyard for these vans. Let's see what we can find. I need some other things for this van anyway. So. Okay, so it is the next day again. <clears throat> and uh, I've already went to the junkyard, picked up another fuel rail. Uh, it was only like 15 bucks, which is not bad because of the headache that I already went through. Um, it poured down early this morning when I went out. Uh, I had to wait. Finally got in. It was muddy as a son of a gun, but I got in there and I got another fuel rail. And here's what we got. So as you see, this is the old one with that some kind of regulator valve. I don't know what it's supposed to do. Something about pulsating or helping the injectors. But anyway, apparently Chrysler updated it to where there is no one anymore. Same 3.3, same everything, except doesn't have that little valve on here to cause a leak. So, it came off of a 2003. Everything's supposed to be interchangeable from 01 to 07. Uh, so, I'm going to try it. I mean, I, there's nothing else I can do here. I can't fix this issue. That moves too much. Even if I went to the junkyard, it still is taking a risk of another one leaking. Um... So I picked up this one. I looked at least probably six or seven of those vans, uh, different years from 01 to 07, and they all had this style. They didn't have this. So I don't know what the deal is about that. But anyway, I'm going to take the ejectors out of this guy, put it in the new one, newer, and then we'll slap this back together, put the engine back together, and find out what happens. Because I'm telling you, I'm sick of this van. I'm ready for it to go. It needs to go. I got other things to do. It has been such a nightmare having this thing. And I also picked up another air filter at the junkyard. I mean, it's a lot better condition. Uh, and it's clean compared to this one that's all nasty and it's wet. I mean, look at it. It's just, it's had it. So, you know, five bucks, the junkyard. I went ahead and got another one for it. The customer ought to be happy about that because he didn't want to spend the money on another one. So... I uh, went in and just picked up one of the junkyard cheap. Alright. Fuel rail is in. It's locked in. It's bolted in. And the used new injectors from the other rail are in. So now it's time to put the intake back together. All the sensors and hoses and vacuum hoses and all that crap. I did pick up another plug wire because this one right here I noticed was split. Get it off. Yeah, that's no bueno. That right there is going to cause a misfire, and if fuel were to leak and hit that, that's it. So, I just went ahead and grabbed one from another junkyard vehicle. It actually is a Mopar part factory, so um, it really needs a tune-up. But anyway, we'll put it all back together. Uh, I need to go ahead and prime the system, make sure there's no leaks, and then we'll see if she runs again. And make sure that it runs well. Because I'm really not, I'm not, you know, kind of a 50-50 chance here of this working. I don't know exactly, like I said, what that little guy does. It's on the fuel rail, so does it matter? Does it not? I mean, I don't know. But I know it's very extremely common for this fuel leak on these 3.3s from this year model. I don't know what it is, but I used to have a 96. So, uh, it was a 3.3, but it had a totally different setup. Everything's back together, so, uh... Let's fire it up, see what happens, I guess. What is this? Uh, three times now, third time is a charm. Okay, now we're having issues again. Keys in my hand with the switch off and I still have lights on the dash. What in the world is wrong with this van? Oh my goodness. And it's not starting. Nothing. I don't even have a dinger. What is going on? Alright. 
take 406. There we go. Now, start. Does not sound happy. Hmm. There we go, that's moving out a little bit. button up everything and uh, take it for a test drive. Well, I believe I call that fixed. I don't see any more issues. I wear some smoke under the hood. I got a little concern there, but got about 4.4 miles on it already. So uh, I believe it's good. Pack it up, ship it back to the owner, and call this job done. I hope this helps out for any of you that are watching this. Um, at least you know how to replace the O-rings and the fuel rail on your 2001 to 2007 Dodge Grand Caravan Chrysler Town and Country 3.3 V6. Thanks for watching. Have any questions or comments? Leave them in the bottom. I'll try my best to get to them as always. Like, share, follow, and I will catch you in the next one, guys. Stay tuned for more content like this. I appreciate it.